Season 37, War Number 7, and we are up against D69. This time my team will be Tigra, Kitty, and Omega Sentinel. This is gonna be another one of those busy wars. I have, I believe, 12 fights. I'm taking Path 5 in Section 1, and that Tigra on the Shared fight. Ebony Mo, Hyperion, Path 5 in Section 2, as well as that Killmonger. All the right side mini bosses, as well as that Doom boss. But, um, this is a very interesting war because there were a lot of mistakes made. First one being this Hulkling. I'm thinking this Hulkling on the Ebon Flow Knockdown and Force of Will node with Tigra. And I didn't test if Neutralize still worked against Force of Will before going in, and it doesn't. So I can't prevent any of his buffs. I can't keep up my senses, so I won't have my power gain or my damage for most of the fight. So, um, <laughs> with that reach and Hulkling has, as well as the protection and deep of immunity on knockdowns, this is gonna be a very long fight, if not a timeout. I definitely should have tested this before going in, but I thought it would still work. Since after the fix went live, I did take down a Ebony Mo on a Force of Will node and Footloose node the same day the fix went live. And back then it did work just fine. But apparently it doesn't anymore, so don't do what I did, don't try to take this fight with Tigra. Luckily I did have my max boosts on here, as well as the biggest Mystic Glass boosts available. So at the very least, I have a chance to take this fight down. This one is gonna be a very long war video. I had to speed up, I believe, three or four fights this war, so that it wouldn't go over 30 minutes long. But even then, we're gonna be here for a while. Two minutes have gone by and he's down to around 35 to 40 percent. So I am on pace to finishing this fight, but it is still gonna be a very long one. And this is only the first fight of the war. There are gonna be a lot more mistakes here coming up soon. We are now approaching the final minute here, but luckily I will be able to take this fight down here. If only the neutralize still worked against Force of Will, this fight would have taken like 30 seconds at most. But hey, and now we know, and at least it didn't cost me a death. Next up we have a Nick Fury on the Evan Flow Knockdown and Heavy Hitter node. I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. And this Nick Fury doesn't have anything special going for him, so it's the same old dance with Kitty. I'm building up my prowess, using it to heal up from the poison debuff, going for parries to knock him down to disable the protection. If he uses his special 1, I'm just gonna eat it into my face. If he uses special 2s, I'm just gonna dex it like normal. So, that is basically all there is to this one. I'm not using any specials until it is time to finish him off. Because in his second life, he is stun immune and he has the heavy hitter node, so the only way to get my openings would be by intercepting. And it's just safer to rely on the facing for that.
I am trying to land a parry stun here, so I can knock him down with a heavy attack to remove the protection when Nick Fury goes to his second life. If he had the protection up, he will take 60% reduced damage from his own abilities here, which would mean that he is not gonna drop down 30% as fast as he could. I'm gonna be doing a little trick here when Nick Fury uses his special one. He reset his charges, so now he doesn't bypass miss. That allows me to dash at him to face and go straight for a heavy attack to knock him down. That is only safe to do when the opponent is cornered and when they don't have a special ready. But if you get the opportunity, you can do that to easily knock them down. Very useful against ebb and flow knockdown, especially. Next up we have a Tigra on the ebb and flow knockdown and right back at it node. I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. The plan here is to essentially nuke her down with a single special too. I'm building up my prowess and while also building my power up to special 2, I do also knock her down a few times to remove the protection. I do that so that I can take her down as much as I can before going for the special 2 to guarantee that it will finish her off. Now that I've got my special 2, I need to bait out a couple specials from Tigra to make sure that if my special 2 doesn't finish her off, she doesn't get to her special 3. Luckily I do get good crit RNG and she goes down, with a little bit of overkill as well. Now for mistake number 2. We have this Cersei on the new Hazard Shift Incinerated Shock node, and we had two options here. Either I would go and take it with Kitty Pride, or someone else goes and takes it with CGR. And we decided to start with CGR, but yeah, it didn't go as planned, so I had to go and clean it up. I wasn't all too confident fighting this node because of the close call with the Doom earlier this season, so my lack of confidence was what caused us a death here. The game plan is to build up my prowess using the passive stuns from White Magneto pre-fight, as well as landing a couple intercept during the incinerate phase of the Hazard. I don't want to hit her during the shock phase, because every debuff I have on me will reduce my defensive ability accuracy, which can cause my parry stuns to fail, as well as prevent me from gaining prowess on a successful parry stun. Then when I have built up some prowess, I need to wait for the incinerate phase and for her glancing buff to go down, and then throw my special 2 for big damage. I do sometimes also face the last hit of her special 1 to do a little bit of extra damage with my facing. Here I am just parrying to build up my prowess to line up that last special 2, which is enough to finish the fight. I really should have just called this fight and been confident about it. It really wasn't difficult at all. But mistakes were made. And now we've come to an Ebony Maw on the Scared Stiff node. I'm taking this fight with Omega Sentinel, starting with the Tracking Debuff mode active to be able to bypass the Falter debuff. The idea here is that Omega Sentinel is immune to nullify and she bypasses miss, so Ebony Mo doesn't really do anything to you. Basically the only way this fight can go wrong is if you somehow push him to his special 3 by triggering Mystic Dispersion, or if you fail a dex on his special 2, which you shouldn't even be dexing anyways. That being said, I always go for the dex anyways, for some reason. I know I shouldn't, and that it is a stupid thing to do, but it's just a reflex at this point, and um, I ate a special too. Yeah, I would have survived if it didn't land during the falter, but here we are. That is death number one this season.
Deathless Season is gone. As per the title of the video, mistakes were made. But now then, we have a Hyperion on the Power Snack node, and I am taking this fight with Omega Sentinel. Now, the idea here is that since Omega Sentinel is immune to nullify, the Power Snack node doesn't do anything. And that essentially means this is a normal Hyperion fight. I used an invulnerability boost here, in case Hyperion did use his special 3, and I can essentially eat 3 of them. But I have full recoil master is active with Omega Sentinel who has the highest base attack rating in the game. So just by throwing normal combos this Hyperion goes down before I can eat enough special threes to lose this fight. Oh and apparently eating a special three from the opponent makes Omega Sentinel trigger her auto block. Which makes her lose her armor buffs as well as trigger an incinerative upon the opponent. So, today I learned. This fight went down pretty much perfectly according to plan. Still sad about that Ebony Moto. Next up we have this Wong on the Ebonflow Intercept node, and I'm taking this with Kitty Pride. The idea here is to just play Kitty like you normally do, but against Wong I like to bait his special 2 instead of his special 1. Allowing him to use his special 1 makes him trigger his spells, so that is where most of the trouble comes when fighting Wong. As long as you can avoid the special 2 damage somehow, either by being able to text the special, or facing it, or just straight up blocking it, he doesn't really do anything. Well, I do believe he still goes unstoppable if he uses his heavy attack, but other than that, there really isn't anything to worry about. Next up we have a Rintra on the Ebonflow Intercept and Mighty Charge nodes. I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. The plan here is to just play this like any other Rintra. I bait his special ones, punish them with my heavy attack to knock him down, to reduce his mystical charges, and that is basically the whole fight. When it comes to Rintra, as long as you don't let him stack up too many of those mystical charges, he really can't do anything. The only issue with him in general would be the neutralize, but if you use someone who doesn't rely on buffs, even that doesn't do anything to you. So this is a very safe and easy way to fight him, although it is a long fight with almost any champion you can use. I am gonna be speeding this fight up here, because, well, like I said, this war video is probably the longest one I've had so far, even with speeding this fight up. I did push Rintra to his special 2 here, and I'm just trying to bait it. Now to deal with it, I don't even try to dex it. I face it instead, because it's just a single hit, it doesn't eat that many prowesses, and facing it is just very safe to do. Now this fight is coming to an end, all I need to do is just land an intercept to remove the protection, and go for my special 3 to finish him off. A very simple fight, but I did end up taking a lot of damage there, so I gotta use a potion to heal up. This war has been very expensive on the item stash. Now we have a Killmonger on the Ebonflow Intercept and Mighty Charge shared fight, 
and I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. And just to follow the theme of this video, this fight is not gonna go that well either. I used that advanced power boost here because I'm planning on using it for the next fight and I thought that this fight would go down very fast. I am also running 3 out of 3 recoil, so the plan here was to just build up some prowess, get to my special 2, disable the protection and then nuke him down with that single special 2. It did not go as planned. I messed up my facing a few times, which left me below that 3 prowess limit, meaning I couldn't face. And again, here I faced a hit of his special 1, which caused me to not be able to face again by eating my prowesses. I was getting way too close to my corner, so I went ahead and threw my special 3. Now with the quick reset, I'm gonna try to build up my prowess again, get to my special 2, and do what I was supposed to do the first time around. Now to line everything up, I need to just wait for the protection to trigger again, land an intercept to remove it straight away, and then finish the fight with my special too. That is all I was supposed to do to begin with, but yeah, this war has not been great. Next up we have a King Groot on the safeguard miniboss node, and I'm taking this fight with Omega Sentinel, starting with the healbox debuff mode active. Now you've all probably seen me take this fight before, and yeah, the plan is the exact same as always. I need to get my special 3, then wait for the Furies to expire so he can't shrug off the incinerates, go for a double medium to trigger a heal block to deal with the conduit region, throw my special 3 for the 6 incinerate debuffs, and then just finish the fight by keeping those debuffs paused by doing normal combos, finishing with my 4th light attack. The only risk of death here is if you push King Guru to his special too. Other than that, this is a very safe fight and a very easy one at that. Now I got everything lined up, I landed the healbox debuff, used my special 3 during the regeneration phase, and now the rest of the fight is just me doing normal combos, baiting special ones, and pausing the debuffs, letting them do all the damage. And since this is a fight that I have shown many times before, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the rest of it. And of course, even this fight didn't go according to plan, and I dropped the debuffs at the very end. Next up we have a Terrax on the Stunning Reflection miniboss node, and I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. Now, Terrax is probably one of the easiest fights you can take with Kitty, since he is extremely aggressive during the rock field. You can always go for your intercepts, and they are very easy to land against him. So, all you really need to do is just bait a special whenever he gets one to trigger the rock field, then go for medium light combos, and that is all there is to it. You ignore all of the damage from the rock field, the armor break debuffs do heal you up a little bit, although war opponents always have max despair on. It's not gonna be a lot of healing, but it's gonna be a, some healing at least. This fight can be on the longer side, especially on this node, because you can't really use specials. If you use an advanced power boost, you can start with the special one and go for the incinerate debuffs to gain power from the Polkadot power node. But Terrax being a conduit defender, that is not a, 
not really a good idea. One more thing that kinda makes this fight longer is if the opponent is running inequity. Each of those armor break debuffs will lower your attack by a maximum of 36%. So yeah, I mean it is a safe fight, but it can take some time. So yeah, a very simple and easy fight. Next up we have a Misty Knight on the Brute Force and Limber miniboss node. I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. I had a teammate place the White Magneto pre-fight here to allow me to start the fight with 3 prowess simply by landing a parry. And the pre-fight isn't necessary for this fight, since all you really need it for is to get that 3 prowess at the start. It doesn't make a difference for the rest of the fight. So even without it, as long as you are comfortable with Kitty and you get that 3 prowess going either by parrying or landing an intercept, or just normal combos even, then you basically negated any bonus that the pre-fight gave you. Well, there is the 15% attack increase, but yeah, that's all. Now that I'm at 20 prowess, I'm just baiting a special 1 from Misty and going straight for my special 2, which is more than enough to finish the fight. She could evade your special 2 there, but even if she did, all you need to do is just build up some more prowess and start facing again. Now we have the final fight of this war. A Doctor Doom boss with Omega Sentinel, starting with the heal block debuff mode. Now, this is a fight that I have taken before many times, and this one isn't gonna be all that different. The plan is to get Omega Sentinel to her special 3, get that heal block debuff up, and then use the special to trigger the 6 incinerate debuffs. After that, you just want to bait Doom's special once and punish them with normal combos, finishing on a light attack to keep the divas paused. Basically the exact same as that King Root fight earlier. The incinerate debuffs are gonna be your biggest damage source on this fight, and to be able to keep them up for the whole fight, it helps if the opponent has Mystic Dispersion level 5 active. With MD5, the opponent basically gets just under a bar of power from you doing a full combo finishing on a light attack, so you can just cycle the special ones over and over again. Even if the opponent doesn't have MD5, Omega Sentinel is still a good option for Doom bosses. Just keeping the debuffs up is a little bit more difficult and you might need to use multiple special 3s in the fight. And of course I went ahead and ate a special one even though this fight was going basically perfectly up until that point, I have now set everything up properly. I activated the heal block debuff by throwing my second medium, and then threw my special 3 for the incinerate debuffs. Now that everything is set up, I just need Doom to throw his special once over and over again, and just keep the debuffs paused. That is all there is to this fight. As long as you can do that, the fight will go down eventually. It's only a matter of time. And talking about time, I'm gonna be speeding up this mid section here a little bit since it is very repetitive. Now, instead of finishing this fight with those incinerate debuffs, I'm gonna do something a little different. If you use a special 3 with Omega Sentinel when the opponent has incinerate debuffs, you remove those incinerates and deal a certain amount of burst damage instead. With those 6 debuffs active, this special 3 deals a little under 90,000 damage as burst damage at the end of the special. That is more than enough to finish the fight. As for the results, my BG ended up losing to theirs 2-4. to four. This was just a horrible war for us, but in the end we did end up winning the war 10 to 6. 
So even with my BG playing very bad this war, we luckily did end up winning it. But it wasn't pretty. On top of my death to that Ebony Mo, I am taking responsibility of the death to that Cersei as well. It should have been me taking it, but I chickened out. And so that is the end to my deathless season. And it just so happened to be against my old alliance.